Okay, so let's get into fulgurites and proof of lightning on the Giza Plateau. Uh huh. So we have a bunch of chemical analysis data and mm -hmm. samples that were taken from all around Giza. My hypothesis, again, uh -huh. for the power source uh -huh. of all of these structures around the world uh -huh. comes from below, from telluric currents, and from above, from lightning. It's a two-part power source hmm. where the telluric currents provide the initial charge. Okay. And then the lightning pushes everything to completion and is the discharge phase of operation. So we have charging and discharging, as above, so below. Okay. Okay, so on the Giza Plateau, we have chemical analysis that were taken from the iron veins. And from we're getting... Here. So my colleagues at the Acida Project, it's an international research team that took a bunch of samples from 2010 to 2015, about 12 kilograms worth of samples. Wow. Were taken from all around... The, the Acida sites. Project. I-S-I-D-A, yeah. Shout out to um, all of my colleagues who will remain nameless at the Acida Project. You know who you are. Exceptional Why do you gotta make them nameless? Um, because it's an anonymous research organization. Like a bunch of cowboys out there. Something just... like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what they did, I would say, is clandestine. Ooh. Not necessarily approved, but okay. they did collect samples. So this is one of the sample locations on the Giza Plateau where we discovered silicate microspheres from fulgurites. So fulgurites are fossilized lightning, and this is a close-up image of one of these silicate microspheres. So when lightning hits the ground, yep. the high voltage electric current surges through the ground and fuses the substrate material. And it produces these branch-like formations called fulgurites. Right. So we found fulgurites all over the Giza Plateau, which is direct evidence that lightning. lightning was striking on the Giza Plateau, specifically connected to the iron veins that are emanating from the core mm -hmm. of the Great Pyramid and the Central Pyramid. So these iron veins have features like vitrification and melting. Mm -hmm. There are fulgurites embedded in these iron veins, okay. which is evidence of this high voltage electric current from lightning surging through these veins. So the Giza iron veins are the wiring network that connect all of the structures on the Giza plateau. Interesting. Yeah. And I'll get to the function of the boat pits as circuit breakers here in just a minute when we get to the, the boat pits. Okay. It's also a new hypothesis. What are the, is that the pits that are on, on the outside base of the pyramids? Correct. Yes. This is what Chris Dunn hypothesizes that acids or chemicals could have been poured into those things and they may have fed into the shafts like that go into the uh, Queen's chamber. Yeah. So I, I disagree with that hypothesis, but mm -hmm. we are talking about the same features. Okay. Yeah, the boat pits. Got it. Yeah, I think they're circuit breakers. Circuit breakers. Correct, that control the allocation of voltage to different areas. And I've actually mapped the iron veins on the Giza Plateau, and those boat pits are cut into the bedrock in such a manner where they interrupt the veins. They cut right through the veins. When you say iron veins, yeah. what do you mean specifically? Can you have pictures of iron? Yeah, yeah, of course I have pictures of it. Yeah, and we, have of and we have chemical analysis data okay. that shows exactly what these things are. So this is just an image that represents the charging and discharge process okay. of telluric currents coming from above, uh, coming from below and lightning coming from above. Okay. So here's a couple of papers. So anybody that's new to my work, right? In the context of my research, I like to provide academic, scientific, right research paper evidence mm -hmm. that supports all of the claims that I make. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people in the community of alternative ancient history that make wild speculations about the function of the Egyptian pyramids, yeah. and they never show any evidence. Mm -hmm. There are no research papers. There is no chemical analysis data. There is no academic support for these statements. Right. So for me, in each step of the process in explaining this hypothesis, it's important for me to provide academic receipts for everything that I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the first one regarding telluric currents. So telluric currents are just natural electric currents mm -hmm. coming from the earth. And they- Yeah, like this, you don't need to have this full, no one's gonna fucking Yeah, you don't have that. to read this. Um, but this paper is saying that there's a direct correlation between the flow and concentration of telluric currents and subterranean natural resources mm -hmm. like water, 
and metal ore mineral deposits, mm -hmm. which is a direct connection to everything that we have on the Giza Plateau. And all of these ancient sites around the world are built on these subterranean deposits of water. Right. Okay. Next paper here. Telluric and earth currents, lightning strike locations, and natural resource exploration. So the conclusion of this article states that cloud to ground lightning has a direct correlation to areas where telluric currents flow. Mm -hmm. And these telluric currents have a controlling impact. This right. is a quote directly from this paper, that telluric currents have a controlling impact on lightning strike locations. So what I'm here doing is establishing a case for the connection between telluric currents from above below and lightning striking from above because there's a direct connection between sure. these two that makes things sense. right yeah i get it yeah mm -hmm. so from below we have the charging yep. that creates charge on the surface of the earth mm -hmm. or on the surface of a structure and then that negatively charged lightning is attracted to the positive charges that are developed by telluric currents right there's another important quote here in this. I'm going to quote this directly, that geophysicists have known for decades that there's electric currents in the earth, yes. right? And these electric currents are modified by natural resources that can be resistive, like freshwater aquifers, oil, gas, and salt, mm -hmm. or conductive, like brines, and minerals like copper, iron, lead, zinc, gold, silver, and rare earth. Mm. So basically... The paper is saying here that the flow of telluric currents is directly affected by these subterranean natural resources. And Makes the sense. areas where there are more of these subterranean natural resources experience greater concentration and flow of telluric currents. Right. So the paper specifically mentions subterranean water sources and metal or mineral deposits like copper, iron, lead, zinc, gold, silver, and rare earths, mm -hmm. okay? So this is the Hill of Tara in Ireland, one of the most powerful right. energetic sites in Ireland. You can see the wells all around the site, which are evidence of subterranean springs running below these structures. Mm -hmm. All of the stone circles, all of these ancient sites are built on top of electrically conductive subterranean water sources. So water itself, like distilled water, is not an electrical conductor. However, if you have mineral water that's filled with electrolytes, it is a good conductor of electricity. What about um, deuterium? So deuterium, you have to have stuff dissolved into the water. Deuterium, if I remember correctly, like is H3O. Is that correct, Steve? Yeah. yeah, if I remember correctly, deuterium is H3O, not H2O. Well, you can get water with like heavy deuterium and water with low, like no deuterium. Correct. Right? They can deplete the deuterium. So I'm not sure about the electrical conductivity of deuterium. And it has to do with its location on the earth. Like very low deuterium water is yeah. found at um, like the poles, like up okay. close to the North Pole. And then heavy deuterium water is down by the equator. It's not H3O, it's, it's, it's H2O, but the H is... Right. Uh, Containing a proton and a neutron in its nucleus, but there was something. There was a connection okay. between deuterium and those two guys who developed cold fusion, sure. allegedly. Yeah. So I'm not sure about the electrical conductivity of mm -hmm. deuterium right. as compared to uh, regular water. And what I'm specifically referring to here, in the context of ancient sites, mm -hmm. are natural mineral springs. So it's regular water mm -hmm. that has a bunch of dissolved minerals in it like mineral water, mineral mm -hmm. spring sure. water, is rich in electrolytes, which make it a very good conductor of electricity. Mm -hmm. So again, per this paper, they're saying that telluric currents flow easier and accumulate in areas where there are these subterranean conductive features, Okay, like mineral water. So here's a prime example of an ancient site that's built directly on top of these subterranean natural resources, mm -hmm. conductive water. We have the same thing below the Giza Plateau. Okay. So we have chemical analysis from the water inside the Osiris shaft, mm -hmm. and it is brackish water that has tons of dissolved, not tons, but- Salt water and fresh water? Correct. Yeah, yeah. It's a mix of salt water and fresh water, mm -hmm. which makes it a very good conductor of electricity. Right. Not pure water, but mineral water that is rich in salts and electrolytes right. and minerals. Okay. So the next thing here, uh, Giza Plateau and all the Egyptian pyramids are directly connected to these sources of water. We have the Nile River. Mm -hmm. And here's an image comparing the- 
configuration of the Giza Plateau and a modern chemical refinery, which are all located directly on the river. It's crazy need, how close they are. It's amazing, right? The, the comparison between modern industrial chemical manufacturing yeah. and the Egyptian pyramids. All these things are built with the same mindset because you need uh, even a source in Florida, of water. bro, like in all over Florida, you have all these uh, chemical and uh, chemical uh, manufacturing plants and you have all this farmland. Correct. That's they have to build fake irrigation yep. all around it that drains out to the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, yeah. So the same thing, right? And a lot of the things that we've implemented in our modern industrial scale engineering, yeah, in my opinion, can be traced back to the function of the Egyptian pyramids, a la Fritz Haber, mm -hmm. who visited Egypt. Him, him, and Carl Bosch both visited Egypt. Explain and to I, people who Fritz Haber is. Fritz Haber is the guy who designed. Nazi. The Haber process, yeah. right, our modern industrial process for manufacturing ammonia. Right. Which there's some very, very close similarities between the modern Haber process and the ancient manufacturing process that created the same product. Mm -hmm. The big difference being now we make liquid ammonia, which is super cooled ammonia gas. The ancient process made aqueous ammonia, which is ammonia gas dissolved in water. So there's mm. a big difference there. Right. Okay. So here's me standing on the Giza Plateau in one of these iron deposits. You see all that red material on both sides of the me? The dark that stuff? Reddish brown material. Yeah. That is a huge deposit of iron ore. These things are all over the Giza Plateau. Mm -hmm. And we have chemical analysis data from these iron deposits that have rare earths this is the concentration of the rare earth elements that were found in the boat pits. Yeah. So that paper just specifically referenced deposits like copper, iron, lead, zinc, silver, gold, and rare earths. Mm -hmm. We find all of these in the Giza Plateau iron veins. Wow. So again, now I'm just establishing a connection between telluric currents, subterranean natural resources, and the location for lightning strikes, because all of these three things are connected. Right. Right? Makes sense. Got it. So also in these iron veins, we have mm. tin, nickel, lead. This one is platinum. This sample has almost 35% platinum. Oh, wow. This one is silver. We have different concentrations of silver. This one's 41%. This one's 58%. This one's 70% silver. We also have gold. This one is uh, 7%. This one's 32%. This one's 36%. And we have amalgams of silver and gold, electrum, found in these iron veins on the Giza Plateau. Wow. Okay, so now on the Giza Plateau, we have the optimal location for the concentration and uptake of telluric currents mm -hmm. with these iron veins. Mm -hmm. The exact Which means same- more lightning strikes. Correct, directly connected. Okay. Okay. And well, what was the purpose of the lightning strikes? So they wanted more lightning. Yeah, yeah. Well, what was the lightning doing exactly? So concentrating electric fields inside of the structure. And I'm going to show you a paper in just a minute that proves that the Great Pyramid itself was designed with the specific geometry to concentrate electric fields in the area surrounding the king's chamber and the antechamber. Okay. So concentration and storage of electric fields that was induced by lightning. The pyramids, to create ammonia and sulfuric acid. Co correct. Yes. Red pyramid and great and hydrochloric pyramid. acid. Central pyramid. Yes. Correct. Yeah. God damn. Okay. So again, we were talking about the white, the black, and the red, the three colors. Yeah. Encoding knowledge of how each one operates. The limestone itself is for the concentration of those electric fields. And the paper I'll present here in just a little bit proves that. Okay. That the great pyramid. They only tested the geometry of the Great Pyramid, mm -hmm. but I would hypothesize that this extrapolates to all of the pyramids, including the Red Pyramid, Bent Pyramid, and Central Pyramid, yeah. that they all have specific geometry within the tetrahedron shape, like different slope angles. Yeah. So why are the Egyptian pyramids all different slope angles? They're all pyramids, but they're all slightly different. Mm -hmm. I believe that the well, slope- was it all, Yeah. Well, I mean, the question is, like, why, why were they different angles? Like, was- that on purpose? Or yeah, was it's that on just purpose. Yeah, so it adjusts the concentration of the electric fields. The okay. slight variance in the geometry shifts the focus of the electric fields to the specific areas around the reaction chambers. So are you talking about specifically the three on the Giza Plateau? All of them. All of the pyramids that exist out Correct. in Egypt. Yeah. We're yeah. all getting lightning bolts hitting them. Not necessarily directly, but in the vicinity. Okay. Yeah. Okay, wow. so the next thing here. It'd be a scary place to live back in the day. 
So it actually would have been completely safe. Oh, really? Yeah. So same thing is like, uh, <laughs> you know, in, in my opinion, if you were by, beside these things, it's, it's completely safe to stand next to a huge structure that's going to act as a lightning rod mm -hmm. because you standing on the ground would be under no danger whatsoever. Right. Yeah. I ain't fucking standing next to that goddamn lightning It would have been an awesome sight to witness <laughs> seeing these things in operation. Yeah. <laughs> but for example, when it comes to Avebury, it would have been completely safe to be in areas like the head end of the Serpent Temple complex, mm -hmm. which was actually designed for human beings to be inside of these things during these thunderstorm events. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'll talk about Avebury here in just a second and how the function of Avebury. Where's Avebury? Avebury is in Wiltshire, England. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm about to show you a mathematical connection mm -hmm. that proves that there is a link mm -hmm. between the Avebury Serpent Temple Complex in Wiltshire, England, and the configuration of the Luxor Temple, Okay, which also has a cumulonimbus white horse lightning storm generator system. The Luxor Temple does. Correct. Okay, so this- Show me that shit. Yeah, yeah. I have, I have some slides and I'll talk about the function of Avebury. Um, I want to make sure that we keep moving here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because again, I don't want to get too caught up on any- Because right. I have all this in the context yeah, yeah, of the, yeah. the rest we're of the presentation. Minutes in. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay, so again, buckle, <laughs> buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. This is about to be the most epic presentation you've ever heard on the function of ancient structures around the world. Because again, my work doesn't just focus on the Egyptian pyramids. Right. And everything that we're talking about now is mm -hmm. going to establish the foundation- of the mechanisms of operation that are going to drive the function of the Egyptian pyramids. Okay. It's all connected okay. and they all work the same way. The conclusion of this paper here just establishes a connection between the moon and the phases of the moon, earth tides and lightning strikes. Okay. So there's What's more, the connection between, there's between more the lightning moon? strikes during certain phases of the moon. Okay. Okay. So again, we were talking In about certain parts of the world, all over the world, all over the world. Correct. More lightning. Yeah. And what so, phase is specifically the moon? So let me say here. So the conclusion that electrical currents in the rock matrix have a direct impact on lightning strike locations. This conclusion is supported by the fact that there are 25% more lightning strikes at high lunar tide when compared to the number of lightning strikes at low lunar tide. Oh, interesting. So there's a direct correlation high between- High tide, there's more lightning. Yep. Whoa. Yeah. That's wild. So again, this goes back to your point about why these structures are built with celestial alignments, because the builders of these structures around the world understood what the electric universe has been saying. The electric universe hypothesis states that our solar system is an electromagnetically interconnected, integrated network, mm. right? So conjunctions of sun, earth, moon, you know, moon, all of these celestial conjunctions have a direct effect on electromagnetic forces here on the planet. Mm -hmm. So this ancient civilization was tracking things yeah. like the phases of the moon and the tide with structures like Stonehenge and Avebury, Whoa. which are specifically tracking these phases of the moon. So they knew exactly when and where these lightning strikes were going to occur. Wow. Okay, so this wow. is another paper here that basically connects the recirculation of electrical current on mm -hmm. the planet. Telluric currents directly affect where lightning strikes. Lightning strikes then stimulate more telluric currents. Mm -hmm. That's what this paper here is okay. saying. The Ouroboros, an ancient symbol for the recirculation of electrical yeah. current. Yeah. An esoteric symbol that encodes- Positive feedback loop. Again, absolutely. As above, so below. Mm. These two power sources are directly connected. And it's a circ uh, circulation loop okay. of electrical current. <laughs>